Uh, thank you for this opportunity of, to present to you today and update you on recent activities within the uh, Parks and Recreation Department. Parks Division has made a number of improvements to become more effective. Uh, we implemented a centralized inventory system and we also uh, implemented a, a mobile fueling system so we can refuel in the field. We don't have to pull off. We don't have to pull long trailers through gas stations. And it's really helpful during emergency responses. And we just keep getting it done. Uh, we had a strong focus on the park side and our communications. Uh, this year, uh, each of the district managers met with every principal in the Chesterfield County Public School System to assess their satisfaction and what we could do to better serve them at the schools. Uh, we implemented a new survey, again, to get staff feedback uh, on how we were doing and what we could do better. And we also worked collaboratively with the EOC, uh, more maps, resources, improved our response times during emergencies. Parks play an active role in responding to those emergencies. Uh, one thing that we did do is purchase some new equipment, including some salt spreaders. Uh, what that has allowed us to do is do some pretreatment, more so than we did in the past, and also reach out to fire and EMS uh, to help them with their uh, apparatus. With your support, uh, we added the athletics field crew this year. Thank you for that. Uh, we also consolidated the countywide tree response process, so danger trees, tree issues on county property, easements, right-of-ways. It all goes through our shop now, uh, so a much better experience for the citizens. They know who to call, and it all flows through us. So go back with me to 1611. Uh, we're at Henricus now. So when Chesterfield County Public Schools switched to a, a virtual format, obviously that was a huge piece uh, of Chester, or excuse me, of Henricus' business gone. Uh, but like many others in the county, they pivoted uh, to continue to provide services. We saw a huge increase in their field trips for private schools. Uh, their homeschool lineup became much more robust and they produced a, a number of virtual programs. That resulted in a, both a NACO and a NACPRO award for them. And I will give you one shameless plug. So Hops in the Park, November 6th. Uh, we're gonna have over 20 craft breweries out there, your favorite food trucks, so come out and join us at uh, Henricus on November 6th. I know you'll be there, Dutch Casey. Recreation, uh, after our sudden shift to virtual programming, cancellation of most of our large events, uh, folks are really excited to see these things come back. So we had over 9,000 people inside the fence at the 4th of July celebration. Uh, the Festival de Musica held last year at Bensley. Uh, we moved it over to uh, the fairgrounds. We had over 1,000 people at that. New concert series. Uh, we had two shows on the 16th and the 22nd of October. Uh, tremendous success, and we look forward to continuing that relationship with event makers uh, and hopefully have a, a much increased slate of shows for next year and continue to bring these nationally recognized artists right here into Chesterfield County. Of course, last night, thank you all uh, for coming out. Those that could make it, appreciate your help. Uh, Trunk or Treat, it's a fantastic event. Our uh, preliminary estimates were about 12,500 people showed up. Uh, on the athletic side of the department, uh, they have been busy. Uh, one of the biggest things they faced over the last year was uh, when Chesterfield County Public Schools made the decision, or I should say VHSL, made the decision to compress all of the sports into the one spring season, and all of the fields were soaked in 12 inches deep in mud. Uh, we were able to work collaboratively with the schools to move some of our rec groups uh, and make some of the uh, fields available at River City so they could get everything they needed to do, uh, get their seasons in. So just another great example uh, of us working, the department working uh, with schools to serve our citizens. Uh, the athletic section also closely monitored COVID exposures and tracked it throughout the year and we were able to adjust uh, our protocols as conditions warranted. So we're continuing to, to keep an eye on it to this day, and we will adjust again if needed. Sports Tourum is continuing to rebound. Um, 
I don't want to steal too much of Richmond Region tourism's fire. But I, I do appreciate that partnership. They're a tremendous partner for us uh, and really go a long way toward bringing these events uh, into Chesterfield County. Highlight uh, for us was the Sports Tourism Master Plan was updated. Sports backers helped us there. We had about 70 partners that collaborated with us. Uh, so we feel confident in the direction we're headed in terms of sports tourism. There's a lot of exciting things on the horizon. And I just want to thank you uh, for your continued investment in our sports tourism venues and staff. Um, you know, those investments really guarantee that Chesterfield County is going to uh, continue to be uh, a shining star on the East Coast uh, in terms of sports tourism. So thank you again. Our outdoor section, they uh, were one of the first to come back. Obviously, the programs are outdoors, so that made it easier to distance. Uh, for me, one of the most exciting things was to see our adaptive sports programs come back. So we work closely with uh, Sportable, Wounded Warriors, Paralyzed Veterans of America, the United Spinal Association to provide adaptive archery, adaptive kayaking, um, some of the most impactful things the department does. The outdoor section also has done some facility improvements. Uh, we've got a new safety fence out there at CTC Hull. And the tiny little one stall garage you see up there in the top photo was replaced with a much larger facility for the Dutch Gap Conservation Area. So they have more room for all their toys. Uh, Cooperative Extension continues to do their great work. They came underneath the Parks and Recreation umbrella on July 1st, 2020. The Master Gardener Help Desk uh, moved to a virtual platform with COVID, uh, and they won an ACO award for that adaptation. Now, Chesterfield County uh, is a shining star within the 4-H group. The current president of Virginia 4-H State Cabinet is a Chesterfield 4-H team member. Uh, Andrea Farrig helped establish a statewide equity and inclusion task force focused on making policy and system changes. And if you hadn't been over to the Central Library and the Cooperative Extension offices recently, the demonstration area has just become a hub of activity over there. Uh, and they're looking forward to adding shade gardens and uh, metal garden to join the chickens and beehives and other cool stuff they have over there. So if you have a chance, swing by. They're doing some great things. Uh, Division of Planning and Construction Services have been very busy. Uh, a few of the highlights there, the CTC Hull Dog Park, 12 pickleball courts lit over there. Bensley Park, uh, the park and the building. Full renovations, we are gonna replace the roof uh, this year on the Bensley Recreation Center as well. And Henricus Park, uh, we replaced a dock out there. Harrogate Park Phase 2, planned for completion in 2021. Phase 3 in December of 2022. Uh, Horner Park, we're finally going to get some water out there so we can irrigate those fields and hopefully increase the availability to our citizens. Now, we've also got some great partnerships in the Planning and Construction Services Division. We're partnering with the VCU Wilder Center to update the department master plan and partnering with VSU uh, on a student park equity project. Our 50th year uh, was a good one. You know, we had some challenges, but uh, we're looking forward to another 50 years. Uh, and again, appreciate all the board's support and everything that you've done. We continue to expand our social media platform. Uh, we recently added Instagram to expand our reach. And we will continue to adapt as, as new things become available, new tools for us to tell our story better. So I've got one more slide, and I'm going to bring someone else down, but I wanted to see if there are any questions. Any questions, board members? Sir? Very good. So, um, you know, despite the challenges you know, working through a global pandemic, uh, we've continued to provide top-notch facilities, recreation programs, and help create memories um, for people all throughout the entire county and really provide that superior quality of life that we'd like to have here in Chesterfield County. And 
The department has received many awards, but 2021 was an exceptional year for us. Uh, the department was named a gold medal finalist this year. Tremendous achievement for any Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, and we've got with us today is my privilege to introduce and ask him to come up front along with our Parks and Recreation team, Mr. Daryl Crittenden, Parks and Recreation Director from the City of Norfolk. He is a representative uh, for the Amer American Academy of Parks and Recreation Administration and the National Recreation and Park Association, and he's gonna do a, a special presentation for us. Mr. Critton. Good afternoon, Chairman Holland, Vice Chair Winslow, members of the Board of Supervisors and County Administrator Dr. Casey. It is definitely a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. As Director Smet said, my name is Daryl Crittenden. I'm representing the American Academy for Parks and Recreation. I'm with you today to present your finalist award to your community. The National Gold Medal Award is the most coveted award in Parks and Recreation, honoring agencies and communities throughout the United States that exceed industry standards and establish a higher standard for delivering public park and recreation services. Gold medal finalist winners measure the impact and benefit of their services while addressing the community needs. Through the involvement of citizens, staff, and elected officials into all planning processes, the Chesterfield County Department of Parks and Recreation has demonstrated efforts addressing conservation, equity, and health and wellness. The Chesterfield County Parks and Recreation Department demonstrates excellence in long-range planning, putting vision into action each year. Creating an innovative culture has also become a habit for Chesterfield County. We applaud and congratulate the Chesterfield County Department of Parks and Recreation for your outstanding accomplishments. The Chesterfield County Parks and Recreation Department truly represents the best of the best. Since the award's inception in 1965, the Class II population, which is 150,000 residents to 400,000 residents, there's only been little over 275 agencies named a gold medal finalist. You have demonstrated significant success with the design and delivery of superior services to the community. The Chesterfield County Department of Parks and Recreation is now in the upper echelon of 8,000 plus park and recreation agencies across the nation. I'm extremely excited because I noticed it was the department's 50 year anniversary. Yes. Um, what better way to add that cherry on that Sunday yes. to win that gold medal finalist award? And I've been affiliated with Parks and Recreation for 32 years. And this department has always been a flagship department as long as I've been affiliated with Parks and Recreation. Something they do very well. And I can remember from Pete Stiff to Mike Golden and to your present director, Dr. Worsley also. I don't want to leave him out. Yeah. They've always provided life-changing experiences that were quality of life programs and services, and they continue to excel every year, and they get better and better. So with that being said, we are extremely proud, the American Academy of Parks and Recreation Professionals, to formally present Chesterfield County with their finalist gold medal award plaque. Director Smet, if you'll come up. Get that on. Picture. Picture. Thank you. 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 Thank
and for them to receive this this centennial year, this year, this 50th year of your being in existence is just tremendously outstanding. We thank you, Mr. Smith, for being here. We thank you for your service. We just thank all of you for the outstanding things you are doing, have done, and will continue to do. And I heard one word that you spoke very profoundly, sir, innovation. And we appreciate your innovation in making a difference in what you do. You're a leader. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And we appreciate the board support, the citizen support, and county administration. It, it would not be possible without all of us. Mr. Chairman, Please comments, so, so um, my uh, brother-in-law, as it happens, works for Parks and Recreation in the city of Virginia Beach, and he called me specifically to uh, lament his jurisdiction not receiving the uh, gold medal finalist award and uh, congratulate uh, Chesterfield and what we do here. So. Um, uh, you know, unexpected call, but uh, <laughs> wanted to pass that on to you as well. So I know how much other jurisdictions want to be recognized in this way. It's really a testament to each and every one of you. Thank you for that. Sure. Um, how many parks, and, and, and I hate to put you on the spot because I know we've all done a videos to, to try and promote the, just all of the facilities that we have in Chesterfield County, but I just on an average of total acreage that the Parks and Rec is responsible for on a daily basis. Any idea? Yeah, it, it varies how you count it between five and, and 7,000. We've got 41 miles of trails, um, 56 parks, a number of athletic complexes. So there, there are a number of opportunities out there, really, whatever your interest is as a citizen. And, and thank you all for doing those video segments. Uh, we appreciate it. I hope you had a lot of fun, uh, but we want to make sure that the citizens understand and know what's available out there and close to them. Well, my point is that there's, it's a tremendous amount of um, opportunity for the community, but it's also a tremendous amount of um, responsibility for what you have to maintain and provide every year. And um, that's why it's important, at least it was for us, to make sure that we assist in any way we can to get the community to know just how really good we have it in Chesterfield County. And number one, to have those facilities. And number two, have the people to take care of them. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Any other comments? Certainly. We, we thank you. We applaud you. And, and I, I really appreciate that segment. And I thank you for helping me hit the ball, make sure I hit the ball, too. I didn't want to miss it <laughs> First in try. that segment. So uh, oh, it's a good connection. So You're I can play thousand. baseball. Thank, thank you. you. I was bummed I couldn't shoot my bow. We're going to work on that. <laughs> and Mr. Engel, his canoeing uh, was exceptional, too, certainly. And, of course, the soccer for, and, as well. Mr. Winslow. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate you bringing that up because yeah. I do believe there was a discussion over who had the best video yeah. a little while back, and yeah. uh, I think we know who that is and now. Wait a minute. I got to bring accompaniment from the, the dogs. They yeah, were so I yield darn to you. cute and attracted major attention in the park. Yeah, so, I yield to you. So I'm sure you don't want to answer this question, but which video did you like the best? <laughs> Bring it on. Right. I am ready. I don't for want to answer, answer that question. But I, I do want to introduce Jack Berry from Rich Marie's and Tourism. So, Jack, come on up and save me. That, that's a great segue. That's really smart, Mr. Director. Great segue into Jack Berry. Again, thank you all for being here so much. Thank you so very much. You know, you know Mr. Chair, we, we might have to have like a board like pickleball session or a soccer session or go canoeing or, you know, one of those like team building. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Casey. I'm Jack Berry with Richmond Region Tourism. I brought Tamara Wilkins-Harris with me today to present a Richmond Region Tourism update. But just to remind you that Tamara also hosts National Travel and Tourism Week, which has the Tourism Awards, and Bob Smith had won the last Tourism Award for the region because with the report you'll see, everything is kind of relates back to the customer service bestowed by Chesterfield County. So, so when you see all these numbers today, as Ms. Rogers had her numbers for economic development, uh, we have ours, but it's all reflective of what's happened in the last 19 months. So it is power, it's of course, it's economic development, tourism, and we go back 20 months ago when New York Times named the Richmond region as the 52 places to go in the world. And at the time, 31 was Paris. We were 39. We were seven destinations off of Paris. That's how hot we were. 
And then the COVID hit, of course. And so this just shows you the numbers on how devastated the Petersburg, Richmond area were hurt. And April, this is 2020, this is the calendar year, April was the basement. But as you can see, the blue line increasing and the, the orange line decreasing, it was literally attributable to sports tourism here hosted in Chesterfield County, and I'll show you in a second. So looking at these numbers, uh, we've eliminated 2020 because it's they're not relevant numbers. But what I want you to look at is compare 2019, which was a record year, fiscal year of hotel tax collections with 2021, and it's creeping back in April. Rev par is revenue per, per available room. In 2019, we had 7.7 .7 million visitors. But look at in May, the occupancy is narrowing, and June as well, and this is for the Richmond region. And where are we now? So we're coming into the fourth quarter of the calendar year, and things are starting to lift. Uh, the leisure travel is coming back. And this is the, the temperature that we take all the time of people traveling. And these numbers are as of this week. And it was a huge boost with the Delta virus declining severely that in the next October, November, December, we look for really strong holiday travel coming. Just a warning, get your hotel room soon if you haven't done so yet. But look at this, though. This is July, and we beat the record year of 2019. We're outpacing the record year in the first quarter of the fiscal year here. And also, Chesterfield outpaces the entire region in occupancy and, and the rev par as well. So the, it's really enlightening in how this is going. And I'm gonna show, show you a short video that we've got to welcome the visitors back. So we are still on fire. Travel and Leisure, as well as Condé Nast, have just named us as one of the most important destinations. Red Book just recently came out with the top 30 world destinations to visit this year and into next, and we were number 28. Uh, Southern Living just named the top 12 destinations to visit for Christmas holidays. We were number five of the 12. So this is really positive news. It's, again, it's the confidence of the traveler is coming back, and they're coming back, and all weekends, every weekend, we have 18,000 rooms in the region, we're selling out almost every weekend. And this is what the fall traveler looks like, but if you look at this, these are absolutely the demographics of the visitor to Chesterfield County. All of these hit the reason that people are coming here to Chesterfield County. So where are we headed? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Welcome, Chairman Tamara. Howland. Thank you. Thank you, and other members of the Board of Supervisors. My name is Tamara Wilkins-Harris. I am the Director of Community Relations. And Catherine O'Donnell and JC Poma and our organization asked me to say good afternoon to you and wish that they were with you, but they're attending an advocacy 
Advocacy Summit in Houston. And so um, they will be learning and bringing back some really useful information. So where are we headed? We're headed in a really great direction. If you saw in Jack's slides, we know and we know the future of what our travelers are looking like. So one of the things that I love about this slide is that we know that travelers are interested in spending about 20% more than what they traditionally spent post-pandemic, pre-pandemic. Um, also, relaxation and transformational experiences are super important to the new traveler. Millennial travelers are looking specifically at these times of transformational experience, which Chesterfield County has aboundly, right? Um, and we heard that from some of the amazing park systems and rivers and all the things that your parks and rec systems Parks and Rec Department talked about earlier. We are equally divided, and I know you guys have seen this slide before, but this still reigns true. Tourist and leisure travel, I-95 travel, it's still very much up. Business travels are, obviously, that's going to, it's a little low now, but it will be coming back, and we're seeing that in the new trend of 2022. Friends and family, number one reason people visit a destination, and, and also we have our meetings, convention, and sports. And sports tourism, specifically here in Chesterfield, it's it's 80% of the tour, 80% of our sports tourism comes right here from um, the region. So I'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a second. All right, so business event recruitment is still happening. In fact, these ladies are on the road right now. Um, the, this is Lauren Peoples and Pamela Anderson. And uh, Pamela Anderson, oh my goodness. Where did that come from? Oh, blast from the past. Pamela Bennett, excuse me, Benson, excuse me. Um, they, our team is out recruiting business, out trying to get event planners and meeting planners back to our destination. Now, there's a new program we just lost, which is uh, just launched, is Meaningful Meetings. And that's where we're really tying in the meetings and conventions with economic development. So we're recruiting meetings and conventions and aligning it with business recruit economic development, hoping that we bring in these conventions that then can have a long-term investment as far as opportunities in economic development spaces. And so there's more information to come here. Um, as well, which we will hear next year when we give you guys this report. So I hope you guys heard that there are direct flights now from JetBlue and Breeze. Have you guys heard of Breeze? I hope so. Well, our PR team, PR team really did an amazing job of really honing in on advertising and spreading the word about the direct flights in the Richmond region. They've done SEM searches, they've done digital content, native content, all uh, across the United States and advertising these new direct flights. As Jack Berry always says, if you've heard one of his presentations, if we do not use it, we are going to lose it. So that is one of the reasons why our marketing and PR team is really honed in on the direct flights in these specific areas. So marketing and visitors insight. What I want to share most with you is that our advertising and marketing, our marketing team, um, obviously because of travel sentiment during the pandemic, we were very, very low key, if you will, in terms of how we marketed the destination in the region. But as we saw positive sentiment increasing, we went at it full court press. And so we have seen significant increases, and I want to highlight that area. 1,300, 13 million people um, have completed video views, similar to the videos that Jack just shared with you recently. Um, they've done optimizations in terms of the search engines optimate optimizations. Also, if you look at this slide, I want to point out trips by day of the week on Friday and Saturday. Do you know why those are in orange and why you think those are orange? Well, it's because of the fantastic job of our sports tourism and people coming in over the weekend because of sports tourism. Um, and then, of course, these uh, the other data here um, is, is just provide more insight as to what our travelers are looking for, also on the leisure side as well as in the MOC and sports tourism side. So this, this slide basically represents, we are in the news, I call it a paparazzi following. Almost every single day we're getting some type of new accolade. So our press and our marketing team and our PR team specifically are going after travel writers. And so here we just wanted to showcase that you guys were featured in some of those travel writer stories where in uh, DC, you, in the DC Travel and Marketing Magazine, they basically indicated that you had a beautiful, beautiful park, which we know that's Pocahontas State Park, but also you were highlighted as one of the top places to actually live um, in Money Magazine. So we're having significant and continued stories that are being writing, um, that are being written by these travel writers that our PR team um, are actively going after. 
So image perception studies. So in, from March to April, Longwood International conducted a survey um, designed to provide data and insights into travelers coming to the Richmond region and perceptions about Richmond. And so this is here just to basically highlight what some of those findings were. I love that 45% of travelers rate Richmond as a place I'd really enjoy visiting. And then you can see intent to visit Richmond. We're number four out of Charleston, Riley, and Nashville. We're number four. That's significant. And then I also like to point out our, our programming through our foundation, which is Black RVA, Out RVA, and then of course Miniwall. But I love the fact that now we are on a major stage in terms of these types of diversity, equity, inclusion programs that we have in the Richmond region. Um, sports tourism, as we heard, well, we're supposed to be sharing that now. Bob didn't steal our thunder. Um, it's wonderful to showcase here, and this slide says it all, 80% of the market share of meetings conventions all are coming from sports tourism. And Chesterfield is a significant, significant reason for that. And so JC and Jareen um, in, our, in our sports development, JC is now with us in community relations, but before he moved over, he wanted me to give a great, and I hope Bob is still here and his team, but he wanted to give you guys a significant shout out from the team because of all of the wonderful and amazing work you're doing, but also because of the level of customer service, which keeps bringing back these tournaments and to all of these organizations back to the region. So thank you so much, uh, which is why they were awarded um, one of our top tourism awards. Um, so just if you look at this slide, we had 14 regional events, or you had 14 regional events, 32,000 attendees um, in terms of the region, and then USA Swimming, 2021 IWLCA is coming back to Chesterfield, and this is a significant impact. If we highlight one thing, events generated an estimated 14.4 million in regional economic impact. But you can see how this applies to Chesterfield County. 8.6% 8 increase over fiscal year 2020 happened, um, just based on fiscal year 2021, with 36,000 plus room nights, and then of course 1.2 million in direct tax revenue to Chesterfield County. Um, and that is specific, it's significant, and we just again have to highlight um, Bob and his team for assisting us and do that. So sports tourism highlights also in Chesterfield. Um, wanted to highlight sports tourism's strategic plan and the River City Sportsplex master plan. All of these things have, again, significant bearings on tourism and the numbers that are in the Richmond region. And this slide just basically highlights some of the, the, the wonderful events that have been here. Um, and then we have to, again, highlight the, PR, the Parks and Rec staff as far as their support. All right, so the Richmond Region Tourism has a foundation. Um, that foundation supports education. It supports the sports grant program, which is brand new for us. With that sports grant program, it awards $25,000 to sports rights holders locally to bring in sports tourism events um, and to help raise funds for those uh, for that specific program, but also other foundation programming. Um, we are having our first inaugural, it's going to be kind of like the sports ESPYs, but in the Richmond region. And it is called the RVA Sports Awards. And we, it will be at the Greater Richmond Convention Center on February the 5th. So we invite all of you to come out and attend. But we have some significant corporate partners that are uh, uh, have aligned and are willing to work with us to really promote the exceptional sports, um, and sports athletes that we have in the Richmond region, as well as coaches and actual um, um, associations and all of those things that make the sporting events in Richmond so wonderful. So as part of our foundation, and I think a number of you guys have been actually participants in our annual golf tournament, which we hold at Magnolia Green. Magnolia Green. I want to say Grange because we're right next to it, which is also another fabulous facility. Um, but we had our golf tournament now for four years at Magnolia Green, and we do four $1,000 scholarships to Virginia State University hospitality travel and hospitality management students. And we've been doing this consistently over the last eight years. And we feature and highlight them at our annual golf tournament. And there you see a Mr. Wonderful County Administrator there welcoming our, our group to the county. Um, and it's uh, we've loved having this tournament in Chesterfield County. 
Um, Black RVA and Out RVA. Uh, Black RVA was launched in 2019, in the fall of 2019. It is, and Out RVA both are programs that are basically sharing that the Richmond region is welcoming to all. And so there's some fantastic programming that we've been doing over the last year for both of these programs. But again, we invite you to visit and check out websites and Instagram and all those social media opportunities um, that showcase why which the region is welcoming. So our I Am Tourism program is one of our flagship educational programs. And I have to admit, it's one of my favorites because I get the opportunity to really engage and educate and activate our citizens and our cons your constituency about what is in their own backyard. So I invite you all to come. We have digital as well as in-person classes. They're completely free to your constituency. And we've been doing it for all, we have almost 3,000 600 official I Am Tourism ambassadors. Um, and we're super proud of that. Um, there's also an elevated program if you want to dive deeper into what, what you would learn from our IAT class, but also you might want to become a tour operator or a tour guide, or just when you have family and friends that want to visit, you can do your own official tour, and that's our I Am Tourism Academy. And all of these are free services that we provide through our foundation. Um, now I'm turning it back over to Jenna to talk about our tourism officer. So in the pandemic, we lost, launched our tourism master plan, and it was a, a huge in-depth study with over 2,000 inputs from the local community and from visitors. And we've narrowed it down to three priorities of immediate need. One is a headquarter hotel. One is on the image campaign for the region, because not only do we have an image with the tourism, but for economic development. And we're partnering with the Greater Richmond Chamber, the Greater, uh, Greater Richmond Partnership, to put together an image campaign, which is the second part. And then the third part is, is what Ms. Rogers had said, is workforce development, because workforce is critical for the destination and our hospitality industry. And we want to thank you so much for your support. And why we are so successful is because of all the great things that you do here. Thank you. Thank you both so very much for the outstanding presentation. Very passionately done as well, I might add. Thank you. <laughs>